Welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Today, we're gonna do our second version of a one year later, would I still buy this product? Now, the other one that we did was actually six months later, which was the Ninja Speedy. Jamie absolutely loves that product. Check out that video, the full review, and Jamie's thoughts six months later. This is the, I have to look at the book, because it's, it's a mouthful, the Ninja Foodie Smart XL Pressure Cooker Steam Fryer with Smart Lid. So this has been a member of my family here for the last year. I use it quite frequently, and I'm gonna show you how to do a real nice all-in-one meal. And these are steak fajitas. First thing we're gonna do is fire open our lid. You'll see that I have the uh, dual tray set up. Uh, they suggest actually uh, on the middle or the bottom tray to uh, wrap, uh, make a little uh, tin foil bowl for onions and peppers. But we're gonna start at the bottom here with a cup of this is now I don't know if it's available all over the world but this is an Uncle Ben's pre-seasoned Spanish rice so one cup we're gonna put into the bottom and then I've got a, a full uh, jar of black beans that we're gonna put in and then two cups of chicken broth I'm gonna grab a spatula to give that a stir and a mix we'll mix that all up we're gonna carefully put in our rack and I'm gonna move the top lid. And I've got, as you can see, a bowl of uh, mixed peppers here and some shallots. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit of uh, fajita, pre-made uh, fajita seasoning mix. That's what I marinated my steak with. And a little bit of pepper. And just a bit of salt, because I find that the uh, those pre-made mixtures are quite salty to begin with. And then we're just gonna give that a mix. All right, so now <clears throat> I'm gonna hand bomb those onto our tin foil. All right, so now I've got my top rack that's going to sit just like so. And I've got a beautiful steak, as you can see, marinated in some of that fajita mix. And we're just gonna set that right on top. I'm gonna get our lid closed. All right, so we're gonna set this, uh, I'm, I'm following a um, recipe from the book. I'm gonna set this to uh, steam and crisp 425. So we're gonna go 425. And then it says 10 minutes. But it does say here that it will take approximately 16 minutes in the pre-setting uh, as the unit steams. And then the timer will start to count down. So we're gonna hit start. So you'll see pre. So we could set a timer just for fun to see how accurate they are. We'll see how that goes. So in the meantime, I wanna to talk to you about this product. So what I use it a lot for is the pressure cooker. It's really, really nice. Years ago when Jamie and I first started The Average Kitchen, one of our first ever reviews we did was on the Ninja Dual Lid. So they used to make this exact product with two different lids. One for air frying, one for pressure cooking. The technology has, has come along in the sense where now you uh, have the single lid, so you don't have to store a second lid, so that's really, really slick. Christmas, um, Thanksgiving, in around that time when you're maybe doing cabbage and potatoes and carrots and turnip, this thing is a beast. Does an unbelievable job pressure cooking carrots and stuff like that. Also, I used my mom's recipe while my mom came over and helped me last year make homemade sweet beets, very, very popular here. And my mom was saying old school, boiling the beets on the stove would probably take two hours. And I think they were 18 or 20 minutes in the pressure cooker. So huge, huge time saver. And you can do a huge volume of beets. I thought about maybe even actually doing that video on the beets, not sure. So leave me a comment if you'd like to see that. So overall, really, really like this product. Air fries extremely well. The only real downside is it's big and it's heavy and it takes up a lot of room, but it can also do a lot of stuff. So let's uh, let that continue to preheat and get up to uh, our pressure and uh, we'll come back and have a look. So this unit also comes with this air fry basket, as you can see here. Um, so you kind of have a couple different options when you're doing something like wings, for example. You could put a bunch of wings in this basket and then throw it to cook, grab the basket, give it a toss, shake up your wings or you could use the double racks that I showed you here that's currently inside of the machine and you can layer your wings that way. 
My thought on that would be if you're doing a larger volume of wings, you're gonna need to put them in the basket because you can only there's only so much space on the racks. However, with the racks, you don't have to turn or manipulate the wings in any way because that air circulates all the way through the racks as you know, they have the slots in the racks. So uh, it's thoroughly cooked without you having it manipulated, shake them around. This is also used for French fries. Whether they're hand cut homemade fries or store bought frozen fries, dump them in, again, give them a shake. So there's a little bit of manual work involved with doing the cook uh, with the basket. Um, but you can get, as you can see, I don't think it's marked on the size of it, but the volume is quite large on this. Uh, cleaning is quite easy. This pops off, you don't give it a quick clean, boom, that slides back on, very, very easy. The rack is very easily cleaned as well. I've done air fried chicken legs, like the full leg, the thigh and the um, drum in this works unbelievably well, as well as bone in, skin on, chicken thighs, air fry extremely, extremely well in this machine. The other really slick thing, and if you're a mega fan of The Average Kitchen, which we hope you are, and you watch the original video on the dual lid uh, that I mentioned before, you had to manually open the pressure relief valve. Now, the first time I ever did it, in the review, it scared the living crap out of me. It's quite a funny little outtake. Uh, so then I sort of learned, okay, maybe I'll use a wooden spoon to push it. Of course, you don't want to get burned with the steam. This technology in this machine has a setting that it could be a slow release pressure release or an automatic release. So when you're pressure cooking, say carrots, for example, and it comes to the end of the cook, it will give you, I think it's like three or four loud tones, letting you know it's about to release the pressure. And all of a sudden there's like a switch that goes off and boom, it automatically releases the pressure. So it eliminates that scary moment of having to come in there with a wooden spoon or something to manually change this valve that you see on the top here, does it automatically. So I wanted to mention that point as well. 10 minutes, 42 seconds, give or take a few seconds. So under 11 minutes to get it up, then the 10 minutes started. So lift here, let's have a look. Oh, all right. Grab a pair of tongs here. Grab our steak, feels quite nice. I'll put it in that one, lift that lid off. So I must say our peppers here look fantastic, like really nice. I wonder if I use two pairs of tongs. Can I do this without making a mess? Success, look at that. So those look nice, eh, Jamie? Lift that out. And now we're going to uh, just fill our pot or this Pyrex I have here with all of our rice and beans, which look really nice. Just give me a second to get through this and empty out all these uh, rice and beans and then uh, we're gonna have a fajita. All right, so Jamie and I came up with a, it's relatively new, maybe in the last 10 reviews we've done, this scoring matrix where we run through six categories, we score them in individually and then we divide it by uh, six to get an overall score out of 10. So let me break that down for you here. The biggest issue with this product is the, is the cost. I checked, uh, I ordered this just over a year ago. I checked what I paid a year ago to what it would be right now on Amazon Canada. And it's actually $10 more than it was a year ago. I don't know why, but it was what, 525 Jamie? $525 Canadian plus tax, expensive. $349 US. You've got to be very cautious when you're picking apples to apples for these types of products because there's sometimes a little bit, I think it's almost a little bit tricky. Um, you can get this specific model without the meat probe and without the automatic pressure release um, on it. And it's considerably cheaper, like maybe half the price. But this is the 14 in one, eight quart, Jamie, eight quart, five quart crisper basket with the probe and with the automatic pressure release. So that is your Cadillac. You can get models. So just be cautious when you're shopping and you're doing your research that you make sure you look at the, the model number and the um, options that it comes with. So let's go through our list. Price point, we're giving this a 6.8 because it is on the high side. Functionality, a nine, nine zero. Really, really, really 
um, functions, sorry, functions very, very well. Versatility also high, 9.3. It's a 14 in one. You can pretty much do everything with this. Cleaning, 7.9. Now we did do the cleanup on what we just cooked. Cleaned up very easily. We got water into the main, I could show you here, uh, the main compartment very, very quickly so that the rice didn't cake on and stick, which obviously if anybody does any home cooking knows is a major pain. And uh, size, 7.7. Seven. It is big and it is heavy, but the bigger the machine, the more uh, capacity it has, so the more you can cook. So it's really hard to balance that out. It's almost an individual choice of what's too big of a machine for you and how much space you have in your cupboards or on a shelf to store it. And quality, we give it an 8.4. So overall, this score comes in at 8.2, which is quite high. It's uh, a really, really, really good product that we really, or I have really enjoyed using over the last year. So the reason we're here is our fajitas. Now, obviously you can make these into traditional fajitas and wraps. In today's um, application, we're gonna actually make a fajita bowl. So where did I put my steak? There it is. We gave that some time to rest. As you can see, it, it looks really, really nice. I'm gonna pop that out of our Pyrex. And we're going to um, slice it up with our Ninja knife. So we have reviewed these Ninja knives. And as you can probably see over my uh, left side here, your right side, uh, that Ninja knife block is sitting there. So we're gonna give that a slice. So a little bit on the more well-cooked side. Well, the middle's not too bad. No, the middle's looking good, actually. That's kind of on the medium side. Normally, I'm a medium rare kind of guy, but we wanted to make sure that our rice and beans and peppers and everything was cooked thoroughly throughout um, the uh, pot. So therefore, the steak is a little on the um, more cooked side than I normally would. So uh, I'm just gonna assemble this bowl and I'll be right back. All right, so I assembled a, what I would consider a fajita bowl. We got our rice and beans, we got our peppers, we got steak, a little bit of salsa, a little bit of jalapeno. Let's give it a try. Hmm, really nice. The steak, what I first cut into on the end piece, I was a little bit concerned, but as you can see here, it's perfectly cooked. Uh, the rice and beans are super moist and the rice is cooked through. The peppers and onions still has some crispness to them. So I think we just showed, or what I wanted to show is that not only is this a pressure cooker, an air fryer and so on and so forth, you can do a complete meal in one pot with having three layers of uh, opportunity here with the dual rack and then the bottom to create a really, really nice overall meal. So that's our video. We really hope you like it. If you want to help us, and support us, the best way to do that is just to hit the subscribe button and the like button. We love comments, we always reply to them, so we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.